dirty dicks. There's a bunch of little barns and shacks. There's a windmill I want my photograph with. I don't know what it is with me and windmills. But we're leaving town, and I'm going to keep an eye on the hillside, because I know there's a giant mill. And, and not all, one of them can't be on private property. Just a couple are. So I still might be able to visit it if it's reasonable. Isn't that weird? I've never seen a car that shuts itself off as you're driving and you stop to take a pic, and it and just it shuts sh off. And it turns itself, I mean, you heard it turn over. It did turn it over. <laughs> yeah, that's real good on the starter. The one, the stone one's old. It looks like it's just been kept up. No, there's no front door on it. It's abandoned. Next to, probably these people own it and just build a new house next to it. But most places are on private property. There might be one out of three mills I believe you could visit. I have, I've seen pictures on websites, but I want my own. The thing is, these people, this is, this is wild western justice back here. They'll fry you for being on their property. They will. So you gotta be respectful. There are public areas and there are private areas. And there are newer houses you see right here. It's a newer house. Brand spanking new. These people got money to live back here. You gotta have, you got to. You, you can't be without a vehicle. Oh, there's something. And you can see it's a vast expanse. It's Monitor Valley. You can take Monitor Valley from Tonopah to Austin, and we've been to both. And you get a you get a bunch of miner shacks and things like that too. It's just a given. Oops. Oh. Oh, he's gone. <laughs> I scared him out of the bushes. Tried to take a picture here. But you get minor cabins. Think about this. These stones weighed a ton. And these men use they use mules and there's some piping down there. These mules and donkeys and horses and everything else to kind of pull these rocks around. But there's piping sticking out. You have piping down here and then you have something fenced in. It's on that side of the mountains, on the hills. You have to turn around and look, because I'm telling you, it's there. I wasn't, like, imagining it. This is where the cemetery is back in here, though. Yeah, it's, as you're coming in, I'll have to turn around, but you'll see it. You'll see what I'm talking about. You will. These places are like needles and haystacks, you know? I mean, you're, I mean, you got stuff hidden up on the mountains and the woods and everything else. It's not a super a car, you know, turns around easy. It's not a super big car, but it's big enough. I noticed that. I turned around last night on that one street. I was like, God, that car's big. Yeah. I bet it's as long as our Jeep. Maybe. Wow, there's still snowing up there. It's fresh. This is considered one of the most beautiful ghost towns and beautiful regions in Nevada. And it's scenic. Red rock, cliffs, massive mountains. It's everywhere. But I'm looking for this mill. It's up on the hill. It's right before you get to downtown, I'm telling you, it's nestled up. It's easy to miss because you only get a, a couple seconds to view it and it's gone. But it's a huge set of ruins. And you just got to look. Whoa, look at that bird rolling out of your window. That's huge. Oh, it'll fly off. Oh, it's gone. Ah. Uh, 
He's gone. It was a huge ass raven. I can't believe I seen it coming in and now I don't see it. That's all it is. It's a friggin' brick structure. It's a big brick wall. When I was in the cemetery hiking, I, I looked over and I seen it. And now I don't see it. That's why I had to drive back this way because I had to look. Because I seen it when I drove in and I seen it from the cemetery. And it's just like halfway up the hill. Because you, because I looked at Mill Pond and I'm like, oh, Mill Pond. It's up near Mill Pond and shit. But I just, I'm not seeing it now. <laughs> I'm not losing it. It's a big mill. You should be able to see the walls. I'm never gonna find it. Damn, that sucks balls. Wow. Oh, well, we could do that. We could stay at the inn. Did you see that miner's cabin up on the hill? Look at that. See it? Way out there. All kinds of hidden little things in these mountains and hills if you're looking for it. That's the scientist of the unknown. There's the old school, everyone. And there's a fireplace on the hillside behind the school. If you really drive around, I'm glad I drove around back here because I found about two, three more foundations I didn't see when I came into town. I mean, it's just so cold. You tend to miss things their first time through. There's a lot of snow. There's a lot of snow, but I'm going to turn around up here. I know the mill is not back here. We hiked back here. We didn't see it. It's definitely not up there. You have two, two smelter stacks in Belmont for each mill, and then you have one as a bunch of walls. And I'm telling you, it's like it something's playing with me. I'm telling you, there's mirages going on. I seen a brick, that brick mill, that's in my brochure, up on the side of the back side of this mountain coming in when I did the cemetery and now it's not on the hillside because I was like I said to my Jared earlier he probably doesn't remember I'm like we got to figure a way to get to those mills and I seen the Belmont mill and I seen the other one and now I don't see it anymore so it's obviously I'm either seeing things or something strange is going on but I did give it one more run just to see. Because I've looked at pictures of these ghost towns to see what kind of mills. And, and I know what I was looking at. I know what I was looking at. And that was the combination. Combination mill. It was like three stories worth of brick walls up on the hillside here. And now I don't see it. It's like, hmm. How does a whole mill disappear? Am I like seeing through like a portal lens or something? It's like it's like displaying from like a portal lens that here's the mill, but it's look through the portal, you see it through the portal, but it's really up there. I've heard of cases like that. X Files shit, man. This guy got stuck up here. It looks like he got out. Oh, that's the other truck, yeah. But I I definitely don't see the mill, and it sucks because I wanted to do. A little video about it, and I don't see it. Is it? Is there else open up? Looks like the guy in the truck's gonna help. Keep an eye to your right for any brick ruins. Them out. Yep. Yeah. 
Well, we can't do it in our vehicle. You're on candy camera for being stupid taking a vehicle down two feet of snow. It does lead to the mill, yes. But you know what? If you can't drive it, just get in it. Just walk it. It's not the end of the world. Most of the mills are on private property. I'm sure you could drive out to it. I don't think anyone would say anything if I went out to take one photo of it. <coughs> but then again, you never know. This used to be a an orchard with apples and fruit trees. At one time when there was a ranch back here for the feed the miners. But we'll be heading out of Belmont. I would like to do a video on the combination, but I don't see it. I just don't see it. I mean, when I came down here out of the cemetery, which is right here, I looked up and I thought I seen it. And I don't see the ruins. It's really weird. Now look one last time, uh, uh, but I don't see it. I see cows. It's weird. I just watched the whole mill disappear on the mountainside. Disappeared. As I head out of Belmont, I'm going to tell you a little bit about the combination mill. Of course, you can expect me to come back here because I have other ghost towns and, and projects. And I'll stop and do the mills when there's no snow because I'm not walking through five feet of snow up to my chin. But I will tell you right now, the combination mill, it was a 40 stamp mill. It had two smokestacks. It was so it could divert the smoke and pollution away. It, had, it was sulfide. Well, the sulfide silver ore was crushed, and then it was smelted, and salt was added with mercury to extract the silver. And it would create, when they smelted it, it would create pollutants in the air. Therefore, they had two large smokestacks, because the pollutants were sulfur. So, yes, Belmont had kind of a sulfur type of stench to it. But it was the, the way the smokestack and where the mill was designed, it was made. So that way the town the town didn't get polluted or it and then smell too bad. But you could you could smell the sulfur in the air, I'm sure. I'm sure of it. These mines and mills were massive. But it was a 40 stamp mill. 1867 it was built. 1868 it closed down. It was abandoned. 1878 the mill was renovated, remodeled, and was run till 1879. And then the machinery was moved to a goal, the camp, a place called Gold Mountain. It was a mining camp. And then the mill still remains today, or at least what's left of it. But we'll definitely come back. When there's no snow, we'll come back. We'll visit the mill. I'm going to write the owner of the inn and see if we could help out a little and maybe get an opportunity to check out the wonderful courthouse. But I'm going to get a couple scenic pics before we get out of here. And I'm going to get something to eat. And then we're going to head to Tonopah. I'm going to do the year base in the cemetery. It's pretty fun stuff, actually. And there'll be no snow, hardly. Not compared to the three feet here, unless it's been snowing in Tonopah all day. You never know. Check out our site. Belmont's History. This is Lord Rick. www.paranormalghostsociety.org Even Belmont. It's pretty country for sure. Clean up that window a little. It's Monitor Valley. You got the Monitor Mountains, which are kind of a lower range, and the Takima Range, where it's Shoshone country.
It was the Shoshone who discovered the silver here and told the white man about it. And they came back here and tent camp grew overnight. Then wood, then stone, then brick. But you can see everyone, it's vast. Tonopah's 50 miles away down this road. It used to be a dirt road a few years ago. I guess they paved it. Or it, was, it went from dirt when it was a stagecoach road to gravel to finally be paved. No less, if, if you decide to bring your family to Belmont, bring plenty of food, liquid, blankets, camping gear if you had, in case you get stuck. It's very scenic. But these mountains are snow covered. Of course, it's been snowing. That's pretty fresh, some of that. It has been snowing for a while. These mountains, look at that. It's gorgeous. And this is why I like the Wild West. It's the exact reason why. The scenery is beautiful. I feel very comfortable. I feel like this is a second home for me. Even though my feet are cold, I felt very comfortable exploring those places in the cemetery. And there's a lot of history here. And maybe we'll come back someday and, like I say, we'll end up probably stay. I want to stay at the inn. I do. I really want to stay at the inn. The inn's very haunted in Belmont. And if you get to do the courthouse, I've heard of some really good EVPs coming out of there. So I definitely want to do some other locations in Belmont. When I come and I do the courthouse in the inn, yeah, there'll be no snow. I'll walk up to the mill. I won't even drive. I'll just walk to the mill. Just put on my backpack and just journey into the unknown. It's a great place. It's a great place. That's why I keep going to some ghost towns like Virginia City and Gold Hill and Silver City because those are places that offer scenic beauty, history, ghost, legend, and lore. This is the Wild West. <laughs> from earlier in ice. It's easy to get stuck out here. There's certain places you don't want to be stuck. You have to spend the night out here. You're going to be quite cold. It's always a risk. Whether you go summer or winter, there are always pros and cons. There are always risks. Coming out here in the winter or summer is a risk. It doesn't matter. It's in the middle of nowhere. There are dangers that lurk everywhere. Mines, snakes, aliens, who knows? People passing through looking for to cause trouble. I've ran into some trouble at some of these ghost towns. Just never know. I noticed like, I waved to a few people in Belmont. They were not wave back to me. It almost looked like they were like, oh, it's another visitor. The problem is that towns like this will die without tourism and people that come to the saloons and spend their money and stay at the inn. The town, I mean, these towns will die. They, economy is important nowadays for these ghost towns. Some of them died, some of them didn't. The reason why Belmont didn't die is because people have always lived there and there's always been some business transactions, whether it's a saloon or people taking tours. And I'll come back and I'll spend a little of my money, but I expect the locals to be friendly to me and be accepting since I'm there to do preservation and, and research work. you get the idea. Some of them roads the snow is really thick and you do not want to take them. You'll get stuck. You have to have a really high clearance four-wheel drive vehicle and even that, you can still get stuck in that. I've seen it. I've seen it. I've seen it before. Get stuck in Belmont, they'll pull you out. Get stuck out here, nobody might see you down in the mountains in the desert all the way out there. There's a lot of mines and mining camps throughout here in small little towns. You just got to find them. We're going to eventually do Columbus and the ghost town of Columbus and the ghost town of Silver Dyke, actually Silver Dyke's a mining camp. <coughs> but Silver Dyke's extensive in a canyon. A lot of cabins, structures. It had anything that any of these other camps had. A saloon or two, maybe a stable, a couple stables, a telegraph office, maybe a post office and a few stores. Belmont just grew a little bigger. Silver was rich. And these silver mines in Belmont either made you or broke you. 
And a lot of people who are broke, like Chinatown, a lot of the miners didn't make enough money. They moved on to places like Tonopah. Thompson Smelter. Places out in Nevada that were just beginning their boom in the 1900s, while places like Belmont were... The boom was over. The mines were exhausted by the late 1800s. There's plenty of gold and silver in the hills. Question is, is is where to find it. If the mines are exhausted, there might be new mining claims. I've seen a few ghost towns around here bought out, like Candelaria. New mining claims. Mines were exhausted, but they found new veins. And new mining company claimed it. And they're tearing up the ghost town. But Belmont, it still exists. It's still preserved, and the mining has ceased. And Now today, it's just a remnant of its past former glory. We're leaving the National Forest, the Tayabi National Forest. Nevada strange, has a lot of strange things. Flying creatures, Bigfoot, UFOs, aliens, especially ghosts. Most of these ghost towns, are, ghost towns are really haunted. And they offer a lot of great EVPs and sometimes apparition photos. People have gotten them. Right time, right place. Or is it a matter of the right time of day? But where there's history, there's ghosts. Where there's ghosts, there's energy. And these mountains are covered. We're heading out of Monitor Valley. We'll be in Tonopah in approximately 28 to 30 minutes.